I'll bet you haven't thought about that song for a long, long time, right? <laughs> I wonder, do you think Jesus in this in this story is expecting us to walk on water. Sometimes I think that's what people think. Did you ever think about how that's where that phrase comes from? Like for that song we just heard, for instance, we use it to talk about people who are perfect or people who we look up to or people who have unrealistic expectations of us. Like they want me to walk on water and I can't really do that. But let's look more closely at the story here. Jesus has just spent time with all those 5,000 people in that deserted place that we talked about last week. And after he feeds them, he gathers his disciples and quickly forces them to get into a boat and row to the other side. And there he gets out and he goes and he spends some time up on a mountain recharging his batteries, I imagine, which seems to work because by the time he comes back down the mountain, does anyone have that James Addiction song in your head now? Just me? Okay. Anyway, when he comes back down the mountain, the disciples are just offshore and it's the wee hours of the morning and there is a storm. So there are rough waters. And Jesus apparently walks out to them on the water. In the wind and the rain and the crashing waves and the moving boat, they believe they are seeing a ghost and they are afraid. There's plenty to be afraid of. The fear of not making out of this storm alive, the fear of crashing into the shore or the rocks, of not being able to stay in the boat and drowning, and now this spectacle out on the water. He says to them, do not fear, I am. That's the direct translation. I think it says, it is I, in the version that we normally read. Do not fear, I am. But Peter has some questions. Somehow he shouts to him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come out there with you on the water. So you'll note, Jesus doesn't expect Peter to walk on water. Peter expects it. He's putting Jesus to a test, asking again for proof. Interestingly, at least to me, there is another time in the Gospel of Matthew when Jesus is put to a test with almost these same words in the beginning, at the very beginning of his ministry, when he goes out in that wilderness for 40 days, it's in Matthew 4, I think, out there he meets this Satan figure who says similar words to him, if you are the son of God, jump off this cliff and the angels will save you, and two other temptations that Jesus refuses, refusing to put God to the test or prove anything to himself or this Satan figure out in the desert. And two chapters after this story in Matthew 16, we'll see Jesus trying again to explain to his disciples how he will have to suffer, how he'll be turned over to authorities, how he will be killed, how he will rise. And this same Peter says to him, Lord, never, this can never happen to you. And Jesus says to Peter, get behind me, Satan. Strong words, I would say. Each of those stories are temptations for Jesus, temptations for him to show his power, to make things easier, to command authority and rule the world with strength and might, or at least show that he has it. In this case, Peter testing him during the middle of the storm. What a silly thing to do. Does he really want to step out of the boat in the middle of a storm? Just think about that moment for a second. But Jesus says, come, so he does it, and it seems to work for a minute. And then he looks down and freaks out and starts to sink and cries out for Jesus to save him. And Jesus does, reaches his hand down and pulls him back up. And then he has a question for him. Jesus questions Peter, you of little faith, why did you doubt? So here's another question for this story. Does Peter get that question because he failed to walk on water? Because he noticed the strong wind and started to sink? Is it because he feels fear, a natural bodily response? Is that why he's being called one of little faith? Is it wrong to feel afraid? Or is it more about what we do and how we respond and think and feel when we are afraid? How we respond to God in those times of fear? Fear is a very normal response to the circumstances they find themselves in. A storm, seeing a person 
do a thing a person can't do, like walk on water. The disciples are not wrong to be afraid. And how about the circumstances we find ourselves in? All that is fearful around us, this disease, the unrest, the violence around us. Certainly, if you have black or brown skin, there is fear that it seems to be open season on you. And there are failing economies, wondering if you'll get a job, there is isolation, and there is political brokenness. Of course we feel afraid. There are Christians out there, I've seen it on Facebook, who are gathering again indoors and using stories like this one to say that God is in control, that we just have to trust God, have faith that we won't get sick. It doesn't make any sense to me because, well, I guess that means that the 180,000 Americans that we have lost so far, the 835,000 estimated people who have died so far of this disease in the world, and it's estimated, were all of them people to whom Jesus would say, oh, you of little faith? Is there no one who is faithful, who trusted God, who has died? Just how much faith do you have to have in order to not get infected with the disease? How hard do you have to pray or how not afraid do you have to be? And anyway, Jesus reaches down to Peter and pulls him up, even though he is found to have little faith. I think it may be that the place where Peter proves he has little faith isn't when he notices the strong wind and gets scared when he's out on the water. I think the moment in this story that he demonstrates his lack of faith is when he asks the question, Lord, if it is you, command me to come out to you on the water. I wonder if Jesus' question means something like this. Peter, as soon as you saw me, I told you exactly who I was. I said, have courage. I said, I am here. You heard my voice. I spoke words of assurance and comfort to you. Why didn't you believe me? Why do you doubt that I am with you, for you, and around you? After all this time, why do you still feel a need to test me? Putting Jesus to the test. That's where I think Jesus proves that he has little faith, like that Satan figure tried to do earlier in Matt's gospel, and in the temptation that Jesus would feel when Peter tries to tell them that he can't suffer and die. Are we ever tempted to do that, to put God to the test in times of fear, to bargain with God, or try to get God to prove to you that God answers prayers or will save you? Do you ever feel like you are feeling fear that you lack faith. Another thing to notice about this story is that Jesus comes to us all the time from the very beginning of the story. Jesus is coming to his disciples. He comes to them when they're struggling at sea. He comes to them when they decide he's a ghost. He comes to them when Peter dares him. He comes to them when they begin to drown. He comes to them when they ask for help. He comes to them when they realize who he is and what he is. Jesus never stops coming to them and to us, moving towards us all the time, never stops crossing the dark water to come to where we are. Our fearfulness and our faithlessness don't want make him turn away. And the message is the same for us as it was for them. It's a message of comfort in a time when we would feel afraid. Take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid.